Consider this situation. Okay, we are going to discuss round robin scheduling. Consider this situation. There are four process P1, P2, P3, and P4. CQ burst time for P1 it is 5 seconds, P2 it is 3 seconds, P3 1 second, and P4 4 seconds. Assume all these four process arrives in order. Okay, at a time 0. Here also we are having arrival time equal to 0. Consider arrival time is equal to 0. So what does it mean? At any given time, it is available in the queue in this order. P1, P2, P3 and P4. Okay, this is ready queue. It is available in this order. P1, P2, P3 and P4. Okay. Now let us consider with the Gantt chart as everybody knows. First, which process will enter into the CPU according to this example? P1 will enter into the CPU. Before that, we should know one important thing about the time slice or time quantum. For round robin scheduling, for this algorithm, the time quantum or time slice is fixed as 2 seconds. So, what does it mean? Each process will be given a maximum of 2 seconds to be executed in the CPU at any given time. Okay, for each process, OS will allow only 2 seconds to enter into the CPU. Okay, so once 2 seconds is completed, still it needs more to be executed in CPU, its stands will be given as a last one after completing all process. So, what does it mean? First, P2 will execute for, oh, sorry, P1 will execute for 2 seconds, then P2 will execute for 2 seconds, then P3 will be executed for 2 seconds, but already it has or it needs only 1 second. So, it will execute for 1 second, then P4 will execute for 2 seconds. Again P1, then P2, then P3, then P4. Like that it will continue until all process has completed its job. Ok, let us consider first P1 enters into the CPU at the time 0. P1 will execute for 2 seconds only. Because time slice is only 2 seconds. So, P1 enter into the CPU, execute for 2 seconds. So, remaining time is 3, it will be placed in the end of the queue. P1 will be placed at the end of the queue. Okay. Now, P2 will enter into the CPU. Okay, P2 will enter into the CPU. P2 will again execute for 2 seconds. So, it will become 4. So, remaining time left for the process P2 to be executed in CPU is 1 second. Okay. Now, P2 will enter into the end of the queue. Okay. Now, P3 will be given 2 seconds. P3 enters. Maximum allotted time is 2 seconds, but it needs only 1 second. So, after 1 second of its completion, it will come out of the CPU. As P3 completed its work, it will not enter into the queue. Because P3 has completed its work. Now P4 will enter into the CPU, will execute for again 2 seconds. So 7, remaining time is 2, then P3 will enter into the, sorry, P4 will enter into the, as a last. Now again chance will be given to P1. Okay, now P1 will enter into the CPU, will execute for 2 seconds, so 9, so remaining time is 1. Then P1 will enter into the queue. Again, P2 will be given the chance. P2 will enter, it requires only 1 second, so it will execute for 1 second and come out of the CPU and it is not necessary. So P2 will not require CPU anymore. Okay, so P2 will come out of the queue also. Then, okay. okay then next, P4 will enter into the queue. P4 will execute for 2 seconds, so that is it will become 12. P4 has completed its work and it will come out of it. Finally, P1 will enter into the queue. P1 is left over time is 1 second, so it will execute for 1 second. And P1 will complete its job, it will come out of the CPU. This is Gantt chart for round robin scheduling for this process. Okay. What is the formula for? Waiting time, waiting time, completion time minus, or sorry, completion time minus arrival time plus CPU burst time. So, for our process P1.
what is the completion time for process P1? That is 13 minus arrival time always 0 plus CPU burst time is 5. So 13 minus 5 it is P2. P2 the completion time is 10 second minus 0 plus P2 order burst time 3. So 10 minus 3 is 7. P3. Completion time 5 minus 0 plus P3 order burst time is 4. So waiting time for P4 equal to completion time for P4. Completion time for P4 is 12 minus 0 plus burst time for P4. That is 4. So 12 minus 4 equal to 8. Now we have to calculate average waiting time for all this process. So what is average waiting time? P equal to 8 plus 7 plus 4 plus 8 divided by 4 equal to 27 divided by 4 equal to 6.75. Okay, now we know how to calculate the average waiting time. This is using formula. Okay, one more method as I already told, we can calculate the waiting time uh, using concepts also. Or logically also we can calculate the waiting time for each process. You see, I am not going to use the formula, but logically we will discuss how to calculate the waiting time. Let me take process P1. Okay. So what is uh, waiting time? The time a particular process is spending at ready queue only and not in the CPU. That means we should not calculate the time the process is spending in CPU but in wait, waiting uh, in ready queue. Okay, after its arrival and then before its completion. So after its arrival, how long it is waiting in ready queue? until its completion that is what we are referring as waiting time so that means what we should not calculate the time it is spending at the cpu okay logically let us see for process p1 okay at the time 0 process p1 enters the cpu so we should not calculate the time as long as it is in cpu when it is coming out of the cpu at this position it is coming out of the cpu okay so now this process P1 is placed in the, see this situation, is placed in the ready queue that we have to calculate. When again, when the process P1 is alerted the CPU, at this place it is alerted the CPU. So how long it is waiting in ready queue? 7 minus 2, that is 5 plus. Now this is the duration it is in CPU, so we should not calculate. Now here it is coming out of the CPU. So this we have to calculate. Again at this position it is coming inside the CPU so we could not calculate. So this time 12 minus 9 equal to 3. That is 8 what we are getting. Now P1 has completed its work. Okay using formula also we are getting 8. Using concept also we can get 8. Okay. For confirmation we will check one more process also. Let me take process P4. Okay. When it is entering in the CPU. At this position it is entering to the CPU. When it is coming to ready queue, at zero it is coming in the ready queue. So this much then it is waiting. 5 minus 0 equal to 5. So 5. Again now this period it is spending in the CPU so we should not calculate. Again now here it is coming to the ready queue. And again it is entering in the CPU at this position at 10. So 10 minus 7 equal to 3. So 5 plus 3 equal to 8. Like this also you can calculate the waiting time. Turnover and time formula you know. Simple completion time minus arrival time for each process I am calculating. What is turnover and time for P1? Completion time is 13 minus 0 equal to 13. Process P2? Completion time is 10 minus 0 equal to 10. Process P3? Last appearance 5 minus 0 equal to 5. Process P4 12 minus 0 equal to 12. So average turnaround time equal to 13 plus 10 plus 5 
plus 12 divided by 4. Okay. Equal to 40 by 4 equal to 10. This is average turn around time for this process. Okay. So one important thing we should consider is about the completion time. See, according to this example, P1 completion time is 13. Listen carefully, here also P1 is completing. Here also P1 is completing. It doesn't mean it completes its work. It means it completes its work at the CPU during that given time. Okay, the entire process is not completed. When the entire process will completed? Only after it executing 5 seconds in the CPU only, entire process P1 will be completed. Okay, so don't consider completion time for P1 as 2 here. Don't consider completion time for P1 as 9 here. So, completion time means last appearance of a particular process in the Gantt chart. Okay, completion time how to calculate? last appearance of the particular process in the Gantt chart. So this is last appearance of P1. So that we are taking as completion time. Last appearance of P4 that we are considering as completion time. Last appearance of P2 10. Last appearance of P3 is 5. So that only we are taking as a completion time. And here always we are giving 0 means arrival time is 0 in the question arrival time is not given. Okay, why we are talking about arrival time all the time? Okay, that we will discuss in another example with the arrival time. Okay.